Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to wrap up our discussion on the way, the different ways that we can represent the wave function or the orbital. And we talked about in the previous video this radial probability representation of size square, which remember is basically a, a way of us uh, of visualizing the probability that we have in a certain volume shell or volume slice of the orbital itself. And for the 1s orbital, we notice that there is a maximum probability. Um, where you can find the electron that's located at 52.9 picometers away from the nucleus. Okay, And for every orbital you're going to have this maximum distance. It's just going to be a different value for uh, different orbitals. And you might have, you know, expect that, expected that if we're talking about a bigger orbital that value is going to be further away. And in fact that's the case. So here's a representation of the 2s orbital. And remember that we talked about uh, 1s orbital earlier which is this one this purple color uh, plot right here and the 2s orbital is actually the green plot right here okay and what you can see is that the 2s orbital has you know two maxima right there's one right here and there's another one right here uh, and the second one which is the larger probability is uh, further away from the nucleus compared to the 1s okay now the total probability would be you know if, if you know uh, calculus would be the same as adding the area under this curve plus the area under this smaller curve. That would be the total probability of the um, radial probability of the 2s um, of the 2s orbital. Um, and then here I'm showing the 2p orbital just as comparison, which is the red curve right here. And the 2p orbital has one maximum, which is located right here, but it's further away as you can see compared to the maximum from the 1s. And this has important consequences later on when we talk about the energy of these orbitals because the further away the electron is from the nucleus remember that the less uh, electrostatic energy it has uh, in other words the, the less stable it becomes because the stability of the electron comes from its interaction with the nucleus so the further away that electron is from the nucleus then the less stable the electron becomes okay and that that maximum probability tells you something about where the uh, electron is located uh, with respect to the nucleus. Okay, so one thing I want to point out also about the 2s orbital, the probability distribution, is that there is a node here, and I know it's a node because the probability is zero, right? Because remember that the y-axis is probability, so the probability is zero, so I know that's a node. And that, uh, of course, is exactly the same way that we saw in the 2s orbital when we look at it from the electron density dot representation remember that in the electron density dot representation there's also a node here which is this white space between the two areas where there is probability so you can see how these two representation whether the radial probability representation or the electron dot representation is basically the same way of looking at the wave function you only have one wave function you're looking at but you're just representing it in two ways some people um, sometimes you want to represent it this way because there's a certain um, you know there's certain features you can see better in this representation and sometimes you want to represent it using the plot because there's some features you can see better using this representation so this is the, um, uh, the final slide I want to show you and then we'll go through some uh, other pictures that I want to show you about about uh, orbitals in general but again just to kind of point out that if the 1s, 2s, 2, 3s orbitals here they are shown this is by the electron dot density representation and you can see here that the 1s is the smallest one the 2s is bigger the 3s is even bigger than the 2s right and that Co that goes along with the principal quantum number because this one has a principal quantum number equals one this one is two and that one is three and that corresponds to the size of the orbital you also notice that the shape of all of these are the same because they're all s orbitals so they all have this spherical shape this is the electron dot density representation a lot of times people would uh, represent this in three-dimensional volume so you can see a little bit better that of course this is not just a cross section but the orbital is is a three dimensional you know the atom is a three dimensional object so you really should represent it as a three dimensional uh, shape and the three dimensional shape of a of a s orbital is a sphere so you notice here that this is the 1s and the 2s looks quite a bit bigger than the 1s and you notice again that 
there is the outside probability and then there's the inside probability and then there's a node in between those two areas of probability and then here's the um, 3s and you can see the node a little bit better here than in in the 2s but you can see clearly there's an empty space between this blue part and the um, and this orange part and that corresponds to the node the nodal region okay but you can see those represented also in the radial probability plots because the 1s is the purple curve the 2s is the green one right here and you can see there's a node right here and look at what the 3s looks like we didn't see the 3s earlier uh, in the radial probability plot, plot but now you can see it the 3s actually has one two and three peaks and there's two nodes which coincides with the picture shown here there's two nodes right here and also of course there's two nodes right here in this drawing as well so all these three representations should match up because they are representing the same wave function uh, but again like I said be before sometimes you get more information looking at it this way uh, sometimes you get more information looking at it this way okay and we would talk about this quite a bit later uh, you know when we talk about energy of orbitals this becomes really important to look at it from the radial probability perspective because it tells us something about which uh, which orbital is closer to the nucleus and thereby more stable so uh, I just want to close off this uh, topic by showing you several different uh, radial probability function for uh, your wave function so the 1s we're pretty familiar with it looks like this this is a website, uh, it's a physics website, it's called Hyperphysics. Uh, you can search for it in, in, in Google and find the, um, find the same plot. You just search for radial probability of the hydrogen uh, atom and you'll find this website here. Um, this just allows you to compare all the different orbitals up to 3s. Okay, so if I click on this, you notice that now you see the 2s, which is, you know, remember has a note right there. Uh, and between these two peaks okay there's a really tiny peak here closer to nucleus the 1s is here and then the 3s of course is the one that we just saw earlier and 3s has three different uh, areas and two nodes right so if I want to know the probability of finding an electron in the 3s the average probability I would add up all these different areas under the curve apply them by the same you know the percentages that they have for the each area and then that will tell me sort of the average um, probability of finding the 3s electrons look at the 2p here the 2p we saw a little bit earlier the 2p actually has only one maximum and it's located somewhere the maximum is located somewhere between the 1s further away from the nucleus but a little bit closer than the 2s uh, at least this larger part of the 2s but remember one of the things I want to point out later on is that the 2s also has this little little bump here that the 2p doesn't have okay the 2p doesn't have that the 2p actually goes to zero when it's close to the nucleus and that uh, causes a slight difference in the stability of the 2s versus the 2p orbital uh, if you look at the 3p you notice that with the 3p you now see a note uh, in comparison to the 2p. So the 2p earlier doesn't have a node, right, uh, separating two parts, but the 3p now has a node. The node separates this part and this part of the um, orbital. The 3d, if you look at it, again, it's a, it's also a, a you know, a much kind of broader uh, probability distribution, but the maximum is located pretty far away from the nucleus in comparison to the 1s, the 2p, or the 2s, okay? So that again tells you something about the stability of the, of the 3d versus the other uh, orbitals. So the last thing I want to talk about is just kind of point out the, um, uh, the way the orbitals can be represented, uh, again, in, in that electron dot density or this, the, the kind of the volume representation. So if you look at this, this is your three-dimensional axis, right? And this little animation is just going to show the 1s, the 2s, the various 2p orbital coming in into the same um, three-dimensional axis. Okay, so you can appreciate what it looks like. So this would be the, the 1s was the one that's small right there. This is the 2s, actually. The one that comes in here is the 2s, okay? And you don't need to understand the, uh, the language here. Uh, but here's the 2p. Remember, it looks like a dumbbell shape, so it comes in right here, okay? 
And then here's the other 2P, because remember there's three different 2Ps, right? One 2P aligns with this axis, another 2P aligns with this axis, and then the third 2P aligns with this blue one, which is the Z axis, okay? So all those three uh, orbitals, this is all just one atom, right? So we're talking about still one atom, okay? Uh, and let's take a look now at the 3S. Now we're going to the next principal quantum number. The 3S is bigger than all of these guys because it's the next quantum number. Now you have the 3P. The 3P is bigger than the other guys uh, because, again, it's in the third level now. It's in the third quantum number, uh, third principal quantum number, third shell. So here's 3P uh, in the X direction, 3P in the Y direction, and then 3P in the Z direction. Okay? And so that's really uh, nice to see that all the orbitals are in here. But then once you get to the 3P, then you can go to the next level, which is 4S, the four, fourth level. It's bigger. But then you also have the 3D. Now you see this D orbitals. Remember, that's the shape of the three orbitals are kind of funny. Uh, they're a lot more complicated than the, the P or the or, or the uh, D uh, or the S, I'm sorry. But, but um, they exist in the in the three uh, third shell right so you saw that's one uh, d orbital was shown there here's a second d orbital remember the d orbital has these four lobes so it's kind of unique and different in comparison to the s and the p orbitals okay here's the second d orbital you're going to see another d orbital there's five d orbitals total remember there's a requirement to follow the quantum number uh, rules so there's five different d orbitals you can have okay so there's another d orbital coming in and I think we need one more, right? Because we have uh, we we have four so far. So there's the fifth one right here. Okay. So it's really this is kind of a, a putting everything in one uh, one picture here, which is all the different orbitals in one atom. We're just talking about one atom here, and these are all the different probability densities. Okay, probability uh, of finding the various electrons in a in an atom. Okay. So if I have a 3D electron. There's a certain probability of finding that electron. If I have a 3s electron, there's a different probability of finding that electron. If I have a 2s electron, different probability yet. Okay. So this is uh, another representation of all the various orbitals. Again, this is something from Wikipedia. You can take a look at this. But this is remember this is principal quantum number one n equals one s orbital. There's no p orbital or d orbital or f orbital in the uh, n equals one level. So that's your one s. And then your 2s looks like this, and then this is your p orbitals, because once you go to the next level, n equals 2, you can have three different p orbitals, right? And then n equals 3, you can have both, you can have s, p, and d orbitals, so they're shown here. Now the colors of the uh, orbitals here, red and blue, again represent that phases I was talking about before, the positive and the negative phases. So... Um, you know, the positive is represented by one color, the negative is represented by uh, another color, okay? And once you go to the fourth level, now you can also have the f orbitals. I'm only showing a couple of them here. You can have, remember, seven of them in total. But we're really not going to talk much about the actual uh, energy of these orbitals. They're high energy orbitals. We're not going to talk too much about them. We're going to spend most of our time talking about the S and the P orbitals and a little bit on the D orbitals. But this is just for you to have some appreciation of what these things look like.